Beautiful day in San Francisco, everybody. Wait a minute. Is that a lucky Lincoln penny? Hmm. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. Actually, I don't know what you're thinking, and I don't care. I'm in a fantastic mood here in San Francisco. Check it out, guys. The Lincoln Highway. I am standing at the western terminus of the Lincoln Highway here in San Francisco, California. I have been waiting a very long time to reveal this trip to the world. Yeah, I've been waiting a long time to share this with you. This is the first coast-to-coast -coast highway introduced in 1912 from Lincoln Park, San Francisco, all the way to Times Square, New York City, coast-to-coast. -coast. And we're gonna do it. It is actually older than Route 66, guys. These, these roads, this idea, this coast-to-coast -coast highway has more history than Route 66, and we're gonna go do it. I do just want to point out, though, this, this series, this, the next three, four months is not going to be all about Lincoln Highway. It's going to have my normal share of a little bit of history of the road combined with RV life, uh, Jack's interaction, uh, lots of quirky stuff along the road, and plenty of other stuff. So um, let's get this started before the rain hits here in San Francisco. While the big cities can be stressful to navigate traffic-wise, there's more chance of finding really fun, cool stuff, like a Yoda fountain. It's Yoda from Star Wars. You guys know my RV is named Yoda. That is awesome, I love it. Really nice. I feel like I found a really pretty part of San Francisco, but don't get me wrong, I'm kind of anxious to get the heck out of here. Um, back in 1913, when Fisher introduced the idea, the concept for the Lincoln Highway coast to coast, he had to get supporters. And his second biggest supporter was the Ford Motor Company, Henry Ford. And in order to sell the idea of the Lincoln Highway, Henry Ford proposed, submitted the quote, let's build it before we're too old to enjoy it. And how important is that really? I mean, just like RV life, just like travel, why wait until you're too old to physically get out there and experience it? Let's do it now. Do it right now. Make that step. Make it happen. And they did. Hey! And I was trying to see if there's a way to show you how steep these roads here are in San Francisco. Can you get the angle? Look down here. Look at that. That's the ocean way out there. The bay, I guess. San Francisco Bay. It's just amazing. These cars are coming straight uphill pretty much. I had to park about seven blocks away from what I wanted to see. It's all good. Man, parking is so tough though. So I'm on the corner of Steiner and Broadway here. And as I pan around to this other corner right here, anybody recognize that house right there on the corner? Yeah, that may look familiar to you because that is Miss Doubtfire's house there. That's where they filmed the outside of the building. There's no plaques or anything, but that is the house. Pretty cool. Hello! Ah! 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 Look at this. My first day as a woman, I'm getting hot flashes. One of the tricky parts of driving these towns is the right lane is where you're supposed to have the big rigs, but this is the lane I can't stay in because I'll hit like every car's mirror. So my tire's like riding the line, the center line. Technically, I should just move to the left and have everybody pass me on the right. At least a lot of these cars do put their, their mirrors in to help, but they should give you, oh, we're gonna go through a tunnel. Oh, we're gonna go through a tunnel, Jax. The Robert C. Lenny Tunnel. Whoa. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> this light keeps turning green and nobody's getting through, so I don't know what's going on. I think we're in Koreatown or Chinatown here. We need, I, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip a couple things, other things that I could see that are Lincoln related. Downtown, I just, I gotta get out of San Francisco. I gotta get on that side of the bay at least. So I'll cut back in in a couple hours when I get through. Wide load, use right lane. Sorry, Jax, I think we're uh, wide load here. Yeah, it costs money to even leave the city of San Francisco. Awesome. Hi. 
How much? Uh, it's five dollars. Now we're talking. A little quieter out here. <laughs> what a nightmare. How do you guys survive these big cities? How do you stay sane every day? Just sitting there watching 11 series of green lights go and you don't get through. <laughs> I don't know. I think your job is harder than mine, guys. I really do. This is the first little park I could find. Got some dancing flamingos here. Uh, herons, excuse me. These are herons. Very cool. And uh, San Francisco's just getting, been getting just flooded with rain. I'm sure they're loving it. It's gonna take a while to dry out the city though. Let's go walk out to the water. This is the Albany Waterfront Trail, so go take a walk. I hate to say it, but a typical big city urban park, because I don't really understand it. Strange pieces of concrete with moss. It's been here a while. It served a purpose. What that purpose is, Almost looks like a little mini amphitheater campfire thing. But if we climb up these steps, there's San Francisco Bay there. And right across the center of your screen, that's where I was stuck for nearly an hour in traffic. Oh yeah, this is, this is turning into quite a strange little park here. These weird concrete slabs all over the place with graffiti. What the heck? If it weren't for concrete and wood all these taggers and people that think that we care about all their spray paint would have nowhere to put their art as you might call it because they can't just spray paint the ground they have to have some structure or something to ruin riding trains is good for you okay if you say so not all of it is ugly but still happiness is resistance um stuff to die for <laughs> that is a strange beach Look at all the dogs playing in the ocean. <laughs> Maybe this is a dog park, that's funny. In a second life, if Jax hadn't picked me on the road, I, I might be a dog person. Uh, every time I hang out with uh, Kevin, camper van Kevin, I always wanna steal Tucker. So he knows to keep him locked up tight when I'm around. <laughs> but hey, Pacific Ocean. We are at one coast here and if this plan works in about three or four months we'll be touching down and touching another ocean body of water so here's to the future guys another little uh, fun fact for you about the lincoln highway putting it together in the early 1900s was that it really was fueled by the ford model t uh, getting people to buy that vehicle. I think off the line back then it was $260 brand new. But it really wasn't what fueled the idea to change the roads and make them more drivable. I mean, they were, they were really, really bad to start with. But actually it was bicycles. Back then in 1913 to 16, they were trying to say, you know, it's so rough on the bike. Let's make them smoother. Let's make them better. Let's, let's make these roads of Lincoln Highway better. thought that was kind of funny. Well, I walked out here. Uh, really far, but now I gotta gotta turn around. It's pretty. This was a great little reset after the big city. What? I know, but there were too many dogs. I know, but there were there were just too many dogs. It, well, it was water too. You don't like water. What do you mean? Oh, no! Get out of the trash. Hey, how about that? Will that work? That'll work. Yeah, Dad. Put it in my bowl. Put it in my bowl, Dad. Yum yum. All right. Now one thing I don't understand is why everybody just continues to look at me weird. I mean, no matter what, I would think that this would fit into San Francisco because it's such a strange place, right? You'd think, but no. Apparently I'm the odd one. Now, I have mentioned in the past it's really hard to overnight park an RV in San Francisco, really hard. I've never before today found a spot. I like that spot down in Pacifica, but really every single street in the entire city of San Francisco says, no parking if you're over 22 feet long or seven feet high, which is basically every RV ever manufactured. But thanks to a friend, a viewer of mine, Ty, from the area, he has shown me a spot that has no parking restrictions anywhere down this road. And because it's not an official spot, I'm not gonna share the, the coordinates with everybody. Just wanna let you all know, this is gonna be a safe spot to, for me to boondock overnight. And, um, I want to go inside and do a couple other things. Like I said, I want to keep these videos well-rounded. I don't want it to all be about one thing in any video. So go inside and 
take off this Lincoln hat. Now, the weather here on the first quarter of this trip could get a little dicey going through Nevada, Utah, and Wyoming. Uh, just going to have to just going to play it day to day, basically. I'm in no hurry. Uh, there's no set deadlines or plans or anything. If the mountains are unpassable or unsafe, deemed unsafe by some state, we'll just uh, take a break. Uh, but it is my intention, at least for the next three to four months, to keep these videos popping out every other day. So I hope you guys have subscribed, tell your friends, share my videos on Facebook. Go ahead and pound that like button underneath and hit the little bell and subscribe so you can get all of our updates for this uh, trip. Hope to see you guys in a couple days.